Hey, so <clears throat> short question, and I'm sorry if you already covered it during the show because I'm a few shows late, so you know <laughs> it's yeah. something you already answered. Like, That's please, okay. please feel free to go fast uh, answering that question. What's going on in Turkey right now? That's the question. So, you know, uh, from what I heard, like you know, they decided to fight inflation by lowering their interest rate, which sounds like you know. Uh, the most irrational monetary policy in living time. And, you know, in this day and time, that says a lot, actually. So no have, they completely lost, <laughs> have they completely lost their mind or is there more to it that I don't get? Um, no, they've lost their mind, right? Um, they, they're basically trying to flaunt the laws of physics, the laws of economic principle. Um, this crisis in Turkey has been going on for a few years now, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Turkish lira, I think it is, collapsed uh, a couple of years ago and, and now is collapsing again. Uh, it's kind of a second round. Uh, you know, and, and the reason is Turkey borrowed a lot of money in dollars. So Turk, Turkish companies borrowed a lot of money overseas in dollars. Um, and uh, the, the challenge was that is that you have to repay the money in dollars. Uh, and at the same time, uh, but, but what they took advantage of was very low interest rates. Right? But at the same time, the Turkish government went on a spending spree. Uh, deficits rose uh, <clears throat> and uh, the central bank printed money to basically uh, monetize the deficits, which is, I think, familiar to us these days. Inflation increased. Sadly. The value of the lira declined dramatically vis-a-vis -vis the dollar. And suddenly, all these companies that owed money in dollar, you know, ran to try to convert their liras into dollars so that they could pay back their debt, which caused the lira to collapse even further uh, and caused a lot, some companies to go bankrupt because they couldn't pay. They couldn't. They just ran out of liras to convert their dollars. Um, they got a little bit of stability, uh, you know, over the last couple of years from that. I, I'm not sure exactly what. I haven't dug into it deeply enough to figure out exactly what they did, you know, to get. But now there's a second round. That is, I think, probably all the stimulus money, just like everywhere else. Uh, Turkey had to uh, uh, issue stimulus during COVID. Uh, and all that is manifesting in inflation, which is resulting in the lira collapsing again. I think this time around, fewer companies have their debt in dollars, but some still do. So again, they're exacerbating the problem by trying to buy dollars, sell lira, which makes the lira go down even more. Um, you know, when when uh, three years ago when this happened, or two years ago, whenever it happened, uh, the way they dealt with this was to raise interest rates, which is usually what you do in order to increase the value of your currency in order to reduce inflation, although that doesn't always work. Sometimes raising interest rates actually causes inflation to go up even more. Now, why is that? Because if raising of interest rates causes the government deficits to increase because their interest payments are increasing, then the market then anticipates inflation being higher in the future because deficits are higher in the future. And you will have to inflate one way or the other to pay off the deficit. So as you increase interest rates, deficits increase and inflation increases. So one argument is in order to reduce inflation, it's not enough to increase interest rates. You have to do a second thing, which is fiscal That's discipline. Yeah. You have to reduce spending or increase taxes. So you have to, you have to convince the markets that you will pay the debt back. You won't use inflation i.e. monetizing the debt, to pay your debt back. So what, so what happened when Turkey raised interest rates is it suffered uh, harsh economic times. Uh, it didn't do well. So uh, they're, they're trying the opposite, right? That, oh, I wonder if we can reduce interest rates and see what happens. Reducing interest rates never works uh, because it increases the incentive of people to borrow money which increases the amount of money in circulation in the economy. It increases uh, the velocity of the money. And while it reduces uh, government debt, uh, interest rate obligations, it, um, 
it doesn't reduce actual government spending. So, uh, it, well, it reduces government spending a little bit, but it doesn't give the markets any signal that government is committed to actually reducing spending or committed to reduce it, to, to, to limiting debt in the long run. So it, it's super inflationary. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically um, uh, putting a wish above everything else. It's, it's, it's really just, uh, uh, just voodoo economics, praying, you know, uh, the Islamist, maybe God is on their side. I don't know. Allah might be on their side, but, but there, there's zero, economic logic behind it. Oh, I think you are not uh, allowed to charge interest in Islamic finance. So yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah of course, <laughs> you're not allowed to charge interest in Islamic finance. And I'm not sure how the government actually does it, given that Ogo, uh, Ogo claims to be an Islamist. So I'm not sure how he, what, what kind of borrowing is done there. Now, there are Islamic banks that pretend they don't charge interest, but they charge something else that's very similar to interest. So it very much looks like interest, even though it's not called interest. But here we know that it's interest and it's called interest and it behaves like interest. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they get around that. That's a really good issue, Alexis. I'm not sure how in Turkey they get around the prohibition. It's I'll have to look into no that. Me neither. <laughs> Just in question. Yeah, maybe they're not as Islamist as uh, as they would like some people to believe. All right. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brook Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.